How you guys doing? So, another day, another video. So this whole system that I'm trying to put together is a continuation of the laser level webcam videos that I've done. And what I'm trying to accomplish now is use that system to produce a flat plane. And that involves having a, a very flat line to start out with. And that's what the whole assembly with the laser and the power lens and uh, filter and everything, that's what that's for. And then the automation process is, it's pretty much, uh, it's kind of like scraping, it, but it's, it's scraping automatically, like an automated system for that. And like the scraping part is on the CNC machine. The webcam will be on the CNC machine and it'll be, it'll be on its own axes. Uh, I'm going to call it W axes. And that is going to be spring loaded. And uh, what that'll do is it'll it'll come down, and the bottom of it's going to have a ball bearing. So I, I'll touch the surface directly, and then I won't be using anything in regards to the Z height of the machine to determine where where the height is. Instead, I'll be taking directly the value from the webcam sensor, and then using that as an offset of where the machine is in that physical space. And then that should give me a, a very nice uh, flat um, surface when I repeat this whole thing in an array and you know go through and machine all these points down. And it doesn't necessarily have to be using like an end mill to go down and machine or you know machine a donut or something. I could use something such as like a, a rotary tool that has like a small sanding pad on it, and I could sand a spot and then recheck again sand it, recheck, and then you know do that in a while loop until that surface is like dead on with the laser or within some kind of small range of microns. And then, yeah, like once, once you figure out one step, it's very easy just to continue and loop that entire thing and where the entire surface that you're trying to produce. So that's what this whole thing is trying to accomplish. I'm not sure if it's actually gonna work or not, um, but I, th I think it might. So I think it's worth uh, giving it a shot. This is a optical kinematic mount that I've thrown together and most of them are vertical like the Thorlabs ones. Um, I went with uh, making my own that's horizontal because uh, well this is the laser module one and it has you know maybe two inches or less of uh, throw for the arm but the one for the POW lens is longer. It's it's like double that length. So this gives me an easy way of just uh, paramagically in SOLIDWORKS to extend that swing arm and give me more precision. So this thing works like many of the professional ones where you have a tension spring right there and this uh, pin here is a piece of welding rod. I'm not sure what size it is. 3 16th maybe and you can see it goes on the other side there. So that's working quite well. Uh, I'll show you how that works. I'll do it with this one here. So, as you turn it, it'll move it in and out. And then same with this one here. And this gives you adjustability. You notice when I did this one that this thing can swing up. So I think what I'll do is add uh, another tensioner and a spring and put them on this side here. And then that way I can adjust the tilt of this whole thing. And then also like that spring is gonna keep this from moving up and down. But overall, it, it's so far working pretty good. The, let me get it to the other side. So the pivot on this side here is a stainless steel ball bearing. This one is uh, seven millimeters in diameter. And uh, in CAD, I, I left it so there would be a two millimeter gap in there and the uh, 3d printed design worked pretty good for this like it fits in there very nicely and it like there's no there's no movement it's pretty solid so these adjustment screws they sit on this piece of stainless steel and this is just held in there right there like that it's very tiny so yeah these this works pretty good so this way you get like a hard surface for that uh, let me get that back in there. Everything's so small here. So yeah, that gives you a small surface for the screw to push on. 
that way it's it's not going to sink in and push on that and it should hold its uh, position better i'll probably jump in and out of cad when looking at this thing because it's it might be easier to look at some of the stuff in cad so the screws are held in with uh, some little brass inserts and they look like these things here so these things you just you heat them up uh, i use a soldering iron and you just kind of push them in and then they they harden and they're in there for good. What I'll probably do is, I don't have any on there right now, but I'll probably put some Loctite on these so so there's a bit of resistance. So, that way these things are just not like freely uh, adjusting and moving on themselves. To hold the laser or the lens, uh, I'm using an M4, it's hard to see in the angle there, I'm using an M4 screw right there. And for now I totally forgot to add any like threads in there so this is really non-functional right now uh, but yeah I'll be changing it regardless to generate the actual uh, line from the laser I'm going to be using a power lens and that's what they look like so it's a this one's circular which is good because I can mount it into the uh, this this uh, part pretty easily so here's a close-up of the power lens, and you'll notice that it is roughly 90 degrees. This produces a 90 degree beam coming out of it. And from what I've uh, researched, this is probably the best way of making a laser line from a laser point. Um, this type of lens, it disperses the rays uh, uniformly across the line whereas something like a cylinder will, you know, it'll, it'll be weighted, uh, it won't be uniform. So this is a green diode laser and its, uh, its beam is definitely not circular. It's more shaped like a cat's eye. So I will have to clean that up. And big thanks to Zachary from Breaking Taps. Um, he's given me a lot of useful information with this. I really don't know what I'm doing with a lot of this stuff. so. Leaning heavily on stuff I can find on the internet for all this. Um, but what I'm going to do is, so this is a laser component, and then there'll be a, a similar setup like this for the power lens. And in between them, I'm going to have a, a third setup that's going to have a pinhole, and I'm going to use some microscope lenses to um, transform the uh, laser point down to like a kind of like an identity transformation where it's where I can control the shape of it with the pinhole and then as that gets reprojected back out I can straighten all of the I can straighten the beam back to a, a linear laser and then that should help me clean up the uh, the beam coming out of this thing so it'll be nice and perfectly circular because I'm pretty sure I need I need a good quality point for the power lens to do its job. Uh, I've yet to design that part, but uh, if you have any ideas or if there's any existing designs for that stuff that uses uh, micro microscope objectives, that would be great, and I'll check that out. Originally, I was running this thing, uh, I'll probably show it in CAD, where I had this piece and the power lens kinematic mount all as one thing. But once I put something in the middle of it, it's gonna, everything's going to get a lot more complicated. So separating them out, and I have made here, it's hard to tell, and I'm not sure if these ones are work. I'll have to change the design anyway. These are little markings for some ball bearings, and they're going to be uh, 50 millimeters apart. And then I have a screw here that's going to go in the middle. And the power lens mount, kinematic mount, it's longer, so it's going to have two screws, and that's how I'll be kind of uh, aligning these things modularly down the uh, optical breadboard that I'll set up. For the optical breadboard, I'm going to use some uh, four-inch steel plate that's quarter-inch, yeah, quarter-inch thick, and then I'll use the CNC machine to drill all the necessary holes and stuff and the, the threads and stuff this. Obviously quarter inch is going to be quite flexible so I will most likely TIG weld in a 
like a steel uh, rectangular tube on the bottom of it and that'll just make everything a lot more rigid so that way it's not going to be dipping and flexing and stuff on me and yeah that should hold it in place. I'll also use the CNC machine to uh, face off the uh, the quarter and steel plate so it's nice and flat. Getting the power lens and the laser primarily the power lens alignment to the laser it has to be has to be dead on for this entire system to work because if it's not it's going to create like a happy face or a sad face U shape and that's why I have uh, this horizontal alignment uh, mostly on the power lens version which is considerably longer so it gives me a lot of fine adjustment for this angle and I have a setup that I've come up with to align those things and calibrate that that I'll probably talk about in a future video but for now it's really about just getting the mechanics of this whole thing working so I can get the adjustability for this. For the optical breadboard which this is going to fit into, so in this case this one has one point to lock it down and this is going to screw into uh, that optical breadboard and it's going to be resting on four ball bearings. So one, two, three, four and that'll keep its uh, position. And then the the longer power lens version will have uh, multiple, probably multiple ball bearings and, and screws just so it's kind of fit better. And then the spatial filter in the center, I have no idea yet. So it might, depending on how big, uh, big that thing is, if it's having two microscope lenses and like it could possibly be. So what I found the best way for determining the distance for these springs is to put it on a set of calipers and then pry it apart and then see see how uh, see how much you can flex before uh, it loses its plasticity and you, you'll know that when it's uh, its resistance goes up and then whatever that value is is that's the distance that you want to have this thing at its maximum so that's what I've done here and that's worked pretty good they're really finicky to uh, get in place I guess you can see like it's hooked around that piece and then that one there. What I found the best way of doing this is to get one side done, for instance like this bottom one, and then using some dental tools like this, you can reach in and then grab that spring and pull it up and then you can slip in the uh, pin. In this case I'm using some welding rod and you can slip it in and, and then you're good. Once you got the spring on the dental tool, uh, you can slip it over more and then that way it's it's not going to come loose and then that way you can slip in the pin uh, inside of it and then you can slide it back out. And that, that works really well for, for getting the spring out. Otherwise, you're going to get this thing and it's going to shoot across the room. The screws over here that press against this stainless steel plate, I have ground and then buff the bottom of those so they're nice and round and reflective and I think that's quite important for getting a consistent adjustment so notice how like on this 3D printer one the brass mount that went in there like it I screwed up on this one and it didn't go in straight but on the uh, on like a better like a CNC machine one it would be nice and straight and it would give you nice fine adjustment that way Overall, I think uh, as this design matures and um, the next iteration of this, once it works better and I'm happy with the design of it and it's working well, I'll probably machine all this stuff in aluminum and stainless steel and that will give me more reliable results because like the 3D printed plastic, it's going gonna, it's gonna to move over time and it's like it's flexible and stuff. And, um, some of these parts, replace them with some more rigid material like aluminum and stainless steel, I think would improve the results of this quite a bit. Now at the same time I'm working on this, I'm continuing the aluminum parts for the CNC machine. So I made another one of these parts and this is for the Y axis and this piece is the piece that um, attaches to the uh, plane there and then, yeah. See my previous video for for machine that. But I think uh, this is as far as I've gotten with this. So far it's working pretty good. The next major thing is getting this under control, putting a spring in there. 
and then I think uh, the design is pretty solid. Send me a comment uh, down below if uh, you see anything I missed so far, and at least with this or the whole uh, concept as a whole of getting like a laser line. And I will leave this video here. See you guys next time.